right, well, we're coming up on the 2020 elk season. Um, heading up to Colorado this year again. We got a couple, uh, couple buddies coming along. Uh, so I'm wanting to do a gear breakdown. Um, really just go through everything that I'm taking. I've got my backpack completely set up the way that it'll be going into the mountain with the exception to water and food. Um, I haven't put together my food yet for this trip and no sense in putting water in and getting everything all wet. Um, so this setup right here is going to be coming in at 39 pounds without food or water. I'm running the Exo Mountain Pack 3200 with the K2 frame. This is, uh, I guess, the version from a couple years ago. Uh, real nice pack, real nice pack. So I'll start off. Carrying in this decoy, I found this to be pretty helpful. And I keep it strapped to my bow while I'm hunting. And it seems to work pretty good. Strapped onto my quiver. So as I'm carrying the bow, I can kind of use this while I'm calling. It works pretty good. <clears throat> this year I'm running the PSC Stealth Mach 1 Carbon. Uh, this bow's substantially lighter than my bow last year. I'm two pounds lighter. It's like a three and a half pound bow, you know, plus accessories. Um, pretty sweet. Run a tight spot quiver, gold tip 300 arrows, um, shooting a combination of two different broadheads. Um, got the little, uh, where's 125 grain uh, iron wheel. I've got a 100 grain brass insert, and the arrows are running 500 grains total with the 300 spine. Um, I found it to be kind of happy medium as far as FOC, arrow weight, and speed. Um, I am opting to shoot a different broadhead this year. The standard iron wells are inch and 3 16 width at 125 grain. And I mean, they're a sweet broadhead, indestructible broadhead. This one's actually shot a couple deer. Um, but I am opting to go with the wide version, so it's the 125 wide. I mean, it is substantially larger. Um, I think it comes in at an inch and three eighths. And so that's gonna definitely put a much larger wound channel. And, you know, my big thing is getting a bigger cut in the hide. I'm only taking three of them. They're a pricey broadhead, um, but three will be plenty. So, all right, move on to the pack. Okay, so on the exterior of the pack, strapped on, um, I've got a stuff sack for four big food up, food bags. Um, one thing I've learned is run a reflective paracord, and then I've got a little carabiner mechanism. Um, that it's kind of like a belay device for climbing, like a miniature little belay device. And so what I found is you can clip it on there rather than tying knots for your um, feed bag. I mean, this thing can be 25, 30 pounds with three guys for, you know, a week. Um, and so I found that using this device makes it a lot easier to hoist it up into the tree. You know, we need plenty of paracord. This 50 foot might not be enough. Um, but so what I'll do is I'll have my food in here and I'll have the lid to the pack extended out. Um, I'll extend the pack lid out and put my food in under there and then get it buckled. Um, and so this pack, you know, I try to keep as much stuff on the inside as possible so I'm not snagging. So I'm not snagging stuff. Okay, so I keep my cup on the outside, I frequently make coffee, mixed drinks, um, electrolytes, caffeine. Move over to this side here. Gators are typically worn. Um, when I'm not wearing them, I strap them on the outside. I would say this is one of the most undermentioned pieces of equipment. Um, 
you know, quality gator. Um, you know, I'll get into clothing here in a little bit, but um, the gators keep your pants dry. You know, I don't like to wear a waterproof pants. Um, I'll get into that in a bit. Keep the bugle tube readily accessible. I usually, usually keep the strap buckled so that it can hang if I need to, so I don't lose it. But then I can just reach, reach around and jam it in there while I'm hiking. So, work our way through this uh, butt pad, which is very multi-purpose. You know, this one's uh, used as a doormat, a dining room table, butt pad, kneeling. Um, can't tell you how many uses <laughs> I have for this thing. My trusty moccasins, all my buddies get a kick out of these. But you know, you can't quite beat them. You know, I mean, it's durable leather, they're silent for stocking in, um, relatively lightweight, uh, weigh about the same as a pair of Crocs, and they're very compact. So, this is what I have to take. This would be a pillow, this is Alps Mountaineering. I mean, there's some. There's better, better pillows for sure. You know, I run a stuff sack that I keep all my clothes in, and I found that that's what I usually use if it's not really cold and I'm not wearing all the clothes. Um, but I'll still blow this up also because it kind of enables you to pin in and get comfortable. And this right here is a miscellaneous bag that includes my first aid kit and quite a few things. Um, so I'm going to do a full breakdown on this. Maybe it kind of fast. Uh, blood clotting sponge, muscle relaxers, or any special prescription that you might need. Uh, basic first aid, which is going to be gauze, some more wound seal, antiseptic, band aids, extra batteries. Uh, I always keep an extra diaphragm call aside from all my other extras, um, just in case I lose all of them. I've got one extra. Um, there's a little repair kit for the inflatable mattress. Sawyer accessories, uh, extra quick release, and an extra bottle attachment or filter attachment. You know, you always have extra hose already, so bring these two pieces. Reflective tape, tenacious tape, um, inflatable device repair. You know, so good for patching jackets, tents, air mattresses. We got super glue, sunscreen, eye drops, lighter, latex gloves, fire starter. I have a fire starter in virtually every bag. Um, I just always have fire starter everywhere. Fire starter and lighters. Uh, windproof matches, and I think I've got some other, I think I've got some needle and tweezers in there. Face bandage, uh, more prescription stuff. Um, this one I've got the Aquamira water purification tablets in case filters are bad or in case we're forced to take water out of like really nasty um, wallow or something. Um, but I take Dramamine and I take it before the trip and I take it if um, I start getting nauseous. Um, additionally, in the first aid I've got like an anti-nausea medication, uh, promethazine, and I've got some pain medication. Move on, got a little bit extra paracord. Um, some DEET, and I take a pin and I wrap duct tape around it for duct tape. I keep two of these. I keep one on my hip belt, the blood clotting sponge. This one's a sponge, which is a little bit slower acting. The other one that I use is a, a chemical on a gauze, and I keep that one in my hip belt. I mean, if something happens, I know that I can get to it, I can push it into the wound, um, and hopefully get bleeding this stuff. I also keep the muscle relaxers readily accessible. Um, you've got some back issues, and if it goes out, um, having those muscle relaxers uh, makes all the difference in the world. Okay. 
in my kill kit, I had some extra room in the bag, and so I put a few other miscellaneous items that I will not need on a daily basis. It's kind of the, you know, if I'm only getting into it one time type stuff. I take a spare release, which I think is cr absolutely critical. Some gloves, some additional paracord for hand wrap bags. Um, only two game bags. I've got two other buddies that are coming. Each person's bringing some game bags. More fire starter. If you kill something, you're definitely going to be wanting to start a fire. Some more paracord. That's a reflective. Some more paracord. I opted to bring three different lengths. Um, this little bag, I've got some replaceable blades, zip ties. We've got a little cable saw for cutting apart an animal if necessary or cutting a skull off. Ballpoint pen. Got an extra lighter. Emergency blanket, um, which, you know, I used to keep in the first aid kit, but it makes sense keeping it in here. Chances are I'm not keeping that. I'm running two of these little disposable, replaceable blades. I do take a Gerber um, along with me, but these things are pretty slick. And then if you lose them, it's nothing in the world. And also a contractor sack. And so, to keep blood off the backpack if necessary, or to use an addition to this for laying stuff out. Or if we need to submerge meat in the creek to cool it off. Hand sanitizer connected to the outside, keep your hands clean, use in the restroom and whatnot. Um, trekking poles. You'll notice I've got reflective or reflective tags on a lot of my stuff. And I'm just about anything I could leave behind somewhere. I put this reflective on that way at night. You just hit it with your headlamp, stands out. Um, I went back and forth on trekking poles to between aluminum, the fold in half type, um, ultimately landed on a little bit stouter pair of carbon. Um, these seem to be the right balance between lightweight and strength. Not too flimsy. Um, all right, pack cover is readily accessible from my hip. You know, that way I can get it out. If it starts pouring rain, and I don't want to get my rain gear out, I'm going to pull this thing out and hook it on the lid of my pack and then stretch it out over my head and in a downpour it'll keep me dry until I can get to cover um, and get my rain gear on. And so I like to keep it accessible. Okay, Sawyer kit. Um, I'm sure everybody's familiar with these. If you're not, it's just a basic Screw it on some canvas bag from the creek or pond. Screw it on here. You can do this with your pack on. Disconnect. Connect. And then you can roll the water off and it will just fill your bag. Something new that I'm bringing with me this year that's a first, um, you know, goes goes with my hammock system. And these deals here, um, it's a Hennessy hammock water collection and fly tensioner. So you're killing two birds with one stone. 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 If it's raining, or it's going to rain, you clip these onto the edge of the rain fly in two spots and the rainwater that accumulates in the fly runs down to the low point since this is hanging there and accumulates in the bag and then the weight of the bags adds additional tension to the rain fly. Um, you need tension on the rain fly when it's raining so why not collect the rainwater while you're doing it. Um, so I got two of these I'm bringing this year which should be pretty sweet because it might mean a couple of free liters of water every time it rains. So, 
TP man wipes. These are like a dude wipe, that's what they call them. Like, you know, kind of a whole body, scrub yourself down, use it for whatever you want. I don't bring too many of them, you know. Toilet paper, I roll off into essentially individual servings. Um, that way I'm not taking a whole roll of toilet paper or potentially getting all my toilet paper wet. Um, I just grab what I need out of there, take it with me. Um, hopefully I take it up with me. <laughs> Okay, I got two pouches. My inflatable lantern, which is sweet at night. You, know, you just blow this thing up, solar panel, um, great. My kids bought it for me before my first year. I didn't think I was going to use it. I took it along with me, and it turns out it's one of my favorite things. Um, I'm sure there's a lighter weight option, but uh, I'm digging this one. Battery system. This is the anchor, and I think this is a 2600 milliamp hour. Yeah, 26 or 26,000 milliamp hour. So this will fill my phone like seven or eight times. Um, you know, as long as the phone's put in airplane mode and kept in a power optimization mode, they seem to not. You know, I get about two days uh, per charge. Um, you know, so I'm charging my phone, I'm charging the Garmin inReach, um, you know, which I use. I don't really use it for too much navigation. I've really primarily got it as backup navigation. And then, you know, for, of course, the emergency, um, emergency call capabilities. Um, we've got pretty good phone service where we're hunting, so I probably won't need to use it. Um, but in the event I didn't have phone service, I could send uh, text messages home to family or to work. Um, from my phone through this device, um, but then I can also hit the SOS button and it will get me directly in contact with emergency response um, so that they can help get us out in the event that that happened. Um, if you're not familiar with that thing, um, I'd check it out. Um, you know, you, get, you have the option to either do a month to month subscription or an annual. Um, of course, the annual um, is a little bit less expensive on it per month basis, but if you're only using it once a year, like I do, it makes sense just to do the month to month. Um, okay, so I'm gonna break into, break into these pouches that I keep in my lid. I've got one that is miscellaneous stuff that I use on a daily basis, and then one that is essentially my nighttime kit. Okay, so in the miscellaneous bag, you know, anytime I'm setting up somewhere, to spend the night. I know that both of these are going to come out. And so I just go ahead and take them out and I start off with this guy here. I've got my stakes for my hand observer, a backup flashlight, a couple hand warmers, another knife, Allen wrench kit, USB card reader, knife sharpener, multi tool. I take three tree hooks so I can hang backpack, bino harness, food bag, get everything up off the ground so it can be drying out, and an extra bottle of wind checker. I really try not to overstuff these bags. Um, that way you can just throw everything in here. You see how quick I'm loading this thing up. If your bag is packed, too tight, um, it's really a pain to get everything in. And so I just try to, you know, if it means putting stuff up and getting an extra bag, so be it. Okay. This is my nighttime bag. So I keep my beanie, my spoon. This will usually actually ride with my cook kit. Um, I've got it in here now so I don't lose it because um, it tends to fall off. So some antiseptic ointment, toothpaste, fire starter, allergy medicine, duct tape, lighter, mouthwash, face paint, toothbrush, more allergy medicine, another lighter, miscellaneous, uh, ibuprofen, Excedrin, Tylenol PM, 
uh, mucinex, and more face paint. And so in addition to that bag, I'll usually have um, cut my little thing of coffee creamer I'll keep in there um, and some, some drinks um, in case I want to taste something other than water or coffee. My gloves will end up in there sometimes as well. Oh, on the outside of this bag, I got a piece of reflective taped on there because this is something that I frequently leave sitting on the ground near my tent or my hammock. And then I've got the iron wheel um, broadhead sharpener, which is pretty critical for those broadheads to keep the right bevel on them. Um, this thing makes it a lot easier to do that. Alright, so from there, we're going to move on to the main compartment. Actually, we'll do hip pouch. Okay, so here, I've got my primary headlamp. I loop it onto the loop so I can't accidentally drop it and lose it. Um, I've got blood clotting kit. This is the chemical one. Quick clot, and then I'll have my rangefinder. I usually leave this open with my rangefinder just sitting in there, and it just sits loosely on the top. And I've got a strap connected to it so I can't lose it. Um, I keep it handy. This side I've got my cell phone holder. I'll keep some diaphragm calls in this little pouch, and then my cell phone in the front pocket. In the stretchy pocket on the front here. Oh, that's this one here. My rain gear, my rain pants, rain jacket. These are both really lightweight. Um, if it's pouring rain, I'm not going to be out in it. I'm going to get get myself sheltered. Um, so my rain gear only needs to be good enough to keep me, you know. Keep me dry for an hour. You know, I don't need rain gear that can take a beating all day long. Um, I just don't want to carry it around. Plus, it's usually warm enough that being wet's not that bad. Okay, so this backpack's designed to where you've got a main zip that takes you all the way down. I usually will only open this up like this to pull a single thing out. If I'm taking everything out, I'm usually going through the top. Or this. Yeah. This bag can be stuffed all the way if necessary. So from the top, got my jet boil ready and easily accessible. I've got my puffy jacket. I've got my sleep system. I've got my extra clothes. And I've got my sleeping bag. So, this is a Hennessy Hammock Ultralight. Um, I've got a down quilt attached to it and the oversized. Um, hexagon rainfly. Um, I've got the snake skins on the outside of it that pull down and self-contain everything so um, I literally tension it between the trees and slide the snake skins off and the hammock falls out with the under quilt in place and then I just put tension on the rainfly and it's set up so even if it's pouring rain I can tie it off to the tree, pull it tight, get the get the rain fly out, get underneath it, and I'm out of the rain while I get everything else set up and kind of get situated. I'm not gonna pull this thing out, but you know, the whole thing weighs about three and a half pounds. Um, weighs about the same as a you know decent sized tent, but you know you're off the ground and it's a pretty quick, easy setup. Um, for sleeping bag, um, this is the what is this? This is the Nemo Disco. 
Um, you know, it's a really nice down bag. It's a spoon shaped bag, so it's not a mummy style. Um, if you're a side sleeper, you roll back and forth. I suggest using this, the spoon shaped bag. Um, this is a 30 degree, but this in combination with my under quilt um, and the puppy jacket and my additional um, clothing I've got in here, um, I can probably stay comfortable down to about 15 degrees. Um, all right, so let's take a look at clothing. I guess we'll start at the bottom. Okay, so boots, lightweight, relatively flexible, but yet good up ankle support. I used to run um, a solos, which are more of like a mountaineering style with a really rigid side. Um, I had a pair that were great, made it three years until I wore them out. I just switched to these last year. Um, they're Oboes. I believe they're manufactured in Montana. Um, they sell these boots up in Colorado. They're pretty popular among the, mo lo the locals. Um, you know, I had a great season with them and I've been wearing them, loving them. Uh, they've got a very dry, uh, full Gore-Tex liner and a, I did not have to change the insole. Um, all the other boots I've ever owned, I've had to put different insoles in. And these just fit like a glove. I got the laces pulled out because I just did them with waterproofer. Um, I strongly suggest doing that every year. Pull the laces, scrub them up, rough them up a little bit, and then hit them with waterproofer so they'll penetrate real good. Um, so yeah, doesn't take much. Um, ankle high boots are all you need as long as you got a good gaiter. Okay, so from there, foot, foot health is really important, and I've found that for me, the answer is running a liner sock. And so this is a real lightweight, 100% merino wool. Um, these are made, um, oh, I forget the name of the company, but they're a great sock company. This is actually just one of their dress socks, uh, but they're 100% merino wool. Um, they've got a seam at the top, but then they, the very end of it, the way it's put together, there's not a seam um, on the toe that really stands out at all. And so I find that really important um, for minimizing friction, you know, because that's the whole idea with this liner sock, is it's all about reducing friction. A lot of people don't get it. You know, you want this, this thing is super tight, super tight on your foot. And you figure, you know, that takes the abrasion. So you put that inside another sock and it's slippery. and it allows it to move and the friction occurs between the two socks instead of between foot and sock or sock and boot. Um, yeah, it's pretty slick, uh, the truth. But that's how I run it. I run thick, you know, thick hiking socks. You know, my feet typically are kind of warm. Um, but I'll tell you what, you know, running these thick socks, I do not get blisters. Um, okay, so from there, this is, this is gonna be, this is the extra, that I'm taking in, um, not what I'm wearing in, but the extra that I'm taking in. So I've got two pairs of socks and one pair of sock liners. I have got a mid-weight Sitka half zip. I've got my lightweight base layers. I've got mid-weight base layers and an extra pair of 100% merino wool underwear. And so that, again, that's the extra clothing that I'm taking in, along with um, my first light puppy jacket. So that right there is carried in. You know, keep in mind we we go in dressed pretty light for the hike in, because you're sweating your butt off. Um, on the hike in, of course, I'll have socks, like I showed, <coughs> sock liners, hiking socks, merino wool underwear, um, and then I'm going with a pretty lightweight pant. Um, these are the, what are these? I don't know what model this is. I want to say they're Apex. Um, but they're pretty lightweight. They've got cargo pockets. They've got no rear pocket, which kind of bothers me. But they've got cargo pockets, front pockets, 
and uh, the knee pads. Um, but they're a lightweight pant. You know, they do not have like a micro fleece interior, um, which I think is critical. A lot of the Kuyu stuff um, and some of the Sitka stuff is just too heavy. It's got like a second layer on the inside. This stuff's real thin. Um, it dries quickly. You know, and these pants are not waterproof, but they're very breathable. And you take this pant in combination with the Outdoor Research Gore-Tex Gator, which I found to be as good as any of them. I think some of the hunting manufacturers have finally caught up with these and started producing something that's comparable. You know, but this, this guy here is going to protect you all the way up to your knee, but it's also going to sit down over your boot. covers the boot and your laces and your tongue and it keeps you dry and keeps stuff from getting in there, keeps your pants from getting wet. Um, these things are an absolute must have. I, I've got two pairs and I just cycle through them if I'm coming out of the mountains you know, because I like them to stay really waterproof so I hit them with a ton of waterproofer um, and after I wore a pair for a few days I switch out to the other pair and you know, to make sure you're waterproof them both again before next season. Okay, so that's the pants. Um, I'll run a just standard lightweight tee. Sometimes I do not wear this. If it's real hot, I don't wear that. Um, and I just wear this. And this is a half zip hooded with face mask, um, lightweight. And, you know, I suggest getting this one to where it fits kind of loose so that air can move through it. If it's really hot, I wear it with this chest unzipped and it just breathes really well. Um, but you can also throw this thing on on top of layers and having this hood and face mask combination is just killer. Uh, especially if there's a lot of mosquitoes or yellow jackets, which there usually are. Okay, so that covers, that's what I'm wearing in. Of course, you gotta decide whether you're going with the mesh back flat bill or the slightly tighter fitting, less breathable version. Okay, I'm just gonna step all oh, this stuff right back in here. And if I do not end up wearing this stuff, this right here, the stuff sack, is my pillow. It's actually inside out right now. Um, and it's got a fuzzy side on the outside, which is pretty nice for a pillow. I usually just uh, stuff the puppy jacket in wherever I can to fill voids because these firmly packed stuff sacks are kind of tough to fit in your pack. Okay, so from there, look at the vinyl harness and range finder. Um, the vinyl harness, keep it pretty simple. Um, it's not a very fancy or elaborate harness system, but it works pretty well for me. Um, you know, it just goes straight over the chest, and then the straps come around and buckle. And this one fits really well with my um, with my pack. And so the way I'm set up is I've got my binos handy. I don't have them. I don't have the straps hooked up apparently. The binos are handy and ready for use. Keep this knife hooked to the front. Um, even in the event that I'm hooked up and strapped up, I can grab it and it'll break away. And I've got it ready to stab a bear in the eye if I have to. Um, it's not very big, but the thing really will lock into your hand well and I feel pretty confident in it. Um, I've got a little piece of reflective tape on it in case I drop it. 
Um, I actually carry two of these. Um, they're lightweight and handy. Um, okay, so from there, on this side here, I keep my wind checker, which is in and out all day, every day. Um, and I've got lens cleaning wipe. I usually have another recall in there. Um, I keep this side here, trail markers. So I've got some reflective clip-ons and some uh, reflective tacks. And you know, if I know I'm coming in and out and I just want to be able to find my way to, to make a turn, like I'll mark a turn, you know, or a junction in the trail with these. And you know, those tacks you see everywhere in areas near trailheads. And so I like to use something a little different so that I know for sure that what I'm seeing is mine. And so whenever I'm doing tacks, um, I do a unique pattern or a unique placement on the tree and I'm consistent with the way I do it. Maybe it's just the height that I set them at. Maybe I put two of them side by side or we're doing them at an angle. Um, just depending on what I've been seeing on other trees, that way I know that the marks are my marks. Um, on the side of this thing, I keep a cow call. And this one's like, you know, if I don't have a diaphragm in my mouth or I'm eating and I don't want to have a diaphragm in my mouth um, or I just want a quick response or a different sound, um, you know, this thing's ready to go. And yeah, you know, I typically keep my rangefinder strapped off to the bino harness so that if I take my bino harness off, the optics are staying with it. Um, there's a variety of different ways I'll do it. Sometimes it's hooked on right here, like this. And then I've got my hip pouch right here where my pack's on, and I'll have this just pretty much laying here. And I like it like that because when this string is stretched across me, if I've got my bow in my left hand, I can just take my thumb, and I don't have to look. I can reach and I can hook this thing, and I can get it up into my hand so that I can range while I've got my bow in hand and then I can just drop it, hook my string and I'm ready to shoot. And I found that having, you know, just the right length, it's pretty sweet. Okay, so, yeah. So aside from all that stuff, um, you know, I pretty much keep a backup for every single piece of component or equipment, um, literally from my bow to my boots, to my sleeping bag, pack, range finder, binoculars, um, tent, air mattresses, water filter, you know, keep two of everything um, if you can. And you know, that way if your friend needs one or um, you get hit with really shitty weather and everything gets wet, um, you gotta back up. Um, but yeah, that's what I take into the mountains.